Hmm. All right. So this is what we're going to make in a scatter plot. So just to review that real fast, making a scatter plot. A little bit. You'll see here's our x values and our y values. And so on the x side of the graph, that's going to be femur length. And then the Y side um, is height. And by the way, somewhere it says that it's in centimeters. This is not inches. People are not 170 inches tall. So uh, height. <laughs> it says centimeters. And then we look at our data and we say, this is a pretty big number. So I probably have to count by something other than one. All my X values, what's the lowest value out of these? 30, oh, no, 30, 30, yeah, there's our minimum. And what's the maximum value? Okay, there's our max value. So when I look at my x-axis, I need to have at least 50 on it, and that's not too big, so maybe I can count by what? Tens. Let's count by tens. So make that 10, 20, 30. 40, 50. Okay. Now let's look at the y values. The y values, the minimum is 141. And the maximum is 195. <coughs> so I personally would not like to count by 50s or 100s because, like, all of these values are in between 140 to 1. To 200. So you can you can really do this however you want, but however you do it, these need to be evenly spaced. So if we're counting by 50s, everything's going to pretty much be in this one little area. So you may have learned about like making a break in the graph. So if I want the graph to be like 140, 150, 160, if I want a break where it goes from zero all the way up to 140, how do I show somebody there's a break? Yeah, you put like a little zigzag right there. Zigzag. If you don't do that, then you're not evenly spacing your Y values, and that would not be correct. So we just do this, and it makes it okay. They have to be evenly spaced. So we can start plotting our points. The very first point is the point 40, 170. So I'd go to 40 on the X, 170 on the Y, and put a dot. Right? So we got 45, 183. 45, 183 ish. I should not see phones being used. 32, 151. Okay, I'm not going to finish the scatter plot because this is actually not what we're doing today. I'm just reviewing, like, making the scatter plot real fast, but we're going to do it all on the calculator today. So, is it okay that I don't plot the rest of these? Okay, I just want to take time to do it. Um, you can plot them if you're like, oh, no, it's incomplete. I can't handle it. You can plot them on your own. That's fine. I'm going to go through how to use the calculator, but I will tell you that this down here is missing a lot of what I'm going to say. So I'm going to add in some things that I say, and I 100% feel like you should do it too. And then those of you that don't have a graphing calculator today, you really need to take good notes because you'll be trying to do this on your own later when you actually bring your calculator. So if you don't have one today, make sure you take really good notes. And hopefully, does everybody have one, or are we sitting by you? You don't have one, but you're with her. So you can at least see it going on. Is there anybody else who doesn't have this? You have one? Yeah, okay, perfect. All right. <coughs> so the very first thing I want to do is something that you don't have to do ever again, unless you don't have yours today. This is one thing you're going to have to do. So this first thing that I want to do, just do it with me. And don't worry about ever doing it again, okay? Once we do it, it should be fine. Do this with me. So I'm recording it if for some reason it doesn't work. And 
if you get behind, you stop me so I can come catch you up. Because I am going to go fast just so I can get it all recorded. You can always watch it later. But if, if you're like not even close to where I am, like call me over. I can't see what's on your screen. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to the catalog just, just once. To do that, you're going to hit second. And then right here, the zero button is catalog. And you'll see a screen that looks like this. And then you can see right here it says, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, right at the top corner there's an A because it's on alpha. So I'm going to find the button that has a D on it. I'm going to do X and A. I'm going to hit that. So it's going to jump to the D. You only have to do this one time ever. You don't have to remember this. And then I'm going to go down, 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 down. I'm going to arrow down until I get to diagnostic on. So arrow down until you find diagnostic on. I want you to hit enter. And then hit enter so it says done. Okay, if you've done that, you don't ever have to do it again. Oh no, I don't know how to do it. Whose is this? Yours? Did you get it from somebody? Is anybody not on diagnostic on done? Is there anybody? Everybody else is there. We'll have to wait on that. I don't know if you even need to do it. I'll try to help. I know some of the buttons, but I don't know all of them. All right. <coughs> so what we're going to do now? This is now. This is the stuff you're going to have to do every time. This is the stuff you're going to want to write down. You have data. We have data. Okay, we have some statistics. And we're going to enter in the statistics. To start entering the data. So I'm putting myself a note. To enter the data. Let me zoom in so I can actually see what I'm writing. To enter the data, we're going to find a button that says stat. My finger is on the button, stat. you got to find that button that says stat. Stat, and it'll bring up the screen that you see. And what we want to do is we want to edit our data. We want to edit our statistics. So we're going to hit enter, which is number one. You can either hit number one or you could hit enter. Now, you should have lists. You should have L1, L2. You see I have numbers in it? You may or may not have numbers. But I'm going to show you how to clear the numbers because after we do this the first time, you will have numbers. So you'll want to clear them in the future. So to clear the numbers, so I'm going to write myself a note. To clear the numbers, you arrow up to the L1. Then you hit clear, then you hit enter. Oh, there Arrow up to the L1 or L2, hit clear, and then hit enter, and it should clear all of it. So arrow up, hit clear, hit enter. So if you didn't have anything, you didn't have to do that the first time, I'll do it the second time. Okay. First thing you have to go is that. <laughs> Then 
like a fancy one. There you go. That's just me saying go up to list one. Hit clear enter. We'll do it as long as we get far enough. We'll, we should have time to do it. Okay, so in list one, that's going to be our x values. So you're going to go to this list, the femur list, and you're just going to hit 40, enter, 45, enter. Just type them in. And I'm going to stop saying numbers because that's confusing when you're typing them. We're going to type those in. In the order that they're given in the chart. Don't mess up that order. And the y values will go in your list too. Try it that way. I don't know. Just try it that way. Okay. Anybody have trouble entering? Can I go? Can I go on? Can I go on? You're there? You see the mentor? So one thing you might want to do is just check that the 45 and the 182, like, make sure that they're the same level, because if one of them's longer, then you've missed something or you've doubled up on something. Like, easy to accidentally type something in wrong. You'll have an error if that happens. All right, so we've entered in our data. Now what we're going to do is we're going to um, graph. So I'm going to make a note up here what I'm about to do. So I'm going to graph a scatter plot. Okay. Where am I? Oh, here I am. <laughs> graph a scatter plot. That's the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph a scatter plot. Okay. And I'm putting in parentheses, make sure we clear the y equals button. So I'm going to click on y equals. And when I, I'm trying to fit it all in here, sorry. When I click on y equals, there's stuff in there. I need to clear that out. I need this to be empty when I start. So. Before we start our scatter plot, make sure there's nothing in there. Clear? Clear. And if there's stuff, you know, further down, go down clear. Just make sure there's nothing in there. Okay, we ready to start our scatter plot? So to enter the data, we used stat to start our scatter plot. We need to do stat plot. Do you see where it says stat plot right above y equals? So I'm going to say second stat plot. I'm writing it down here. This will be uploaded to Canvas as well. Second stat, uh, second, and then stat plot, which is y equals. I'm going to write second y equals. So second y equals is stat plot, and you need to hit enter. 
for number one. You need to hit enter. And when you hit enter, depending on which calculator you have, it should look something like this. The most important thing to make this work is you have to turn it on. So do you see how mine says on, yours probably says off. You need to put the cursor on the on and hit enter so it turns on. Yes. So I was reading this up. So I worked on the second button. It was on my button. So if I wanted to read it, mine is on my button. Yeah. It looks like that? Yes. Just hit enter. Yep. And then you'll be where I am. So then um, we need to make sure it's on. And then when you go to your type, we want a scatter plot. There's other kinds that we could make on here, but today we're doing a scatter plot. The X's are in my list one column, which I've already told you that's where they are. And then the Y's we put in the list two. You can choose whatever mark you want. And then if you have the newer calculators, you can choose what color. So we had to tell our calculator that it's about to make a scatter plot. Your calculator does not read your mind. If you do not tell it, scatter plot, it's not going to do what you want. All right? There's something else we have to tell our calculator. Normally when we graph, we have like this window that goes negative 10 to positive 10 and negative 10 to positive 10. What do you have to tell your calculator about the data so you can see it? Is the data going from negative 10 to positive 10? So you have to tell your calculator what window we want to see. So that window that I set up originally, we're going to do that on the calculator. So to change the window, so to graph the scatter plot, we have uh, go second y equals, we're going to turn on the scatter plot. And then we're going to change our window. Change window. And to do that, you click on the window button. It's at the top. It says window. So to change our window, you use the button that says window, and you have to tell the minimum, uh, minimum x value and the maximum x value. And when you look at the graph that we had, my minimum x is going to be 0, and my maximum x was 50. Wait, what, wait, let's go to 60. Let's even go to 60, okay? So let's go 0 to 60 for our x's. 0 to 60. And then on that scatter plot that we were sketching, what were we counting by? What was our scale on the x? By tens. So that x scale is 10. And then our y minimum, that one we had a break. So I'm not going to start it at 0. I'm going to start it at what would be the next number down from here. Let me see where I'm 130. I'm going to start it at 130, and I'm going to go up to 200, and I'm going to count again by tens because that's what we were counting on when, when we drew it on that paper. If you have this, hit the graph button. I'll leave this up for a second because not everybody's there. Hit the graph button. <coughs> Ten. Probably. I'll hit the graph button. Yeah, look like that. I'm going to go back to my window just in case. Is anybody copying down my window or is anybody having trouble when I come to you? So if you hit graph, your graph should look like my graph unless we type different stuff in. It looks okay. So we have a scatter plot. We've done it. Maybe you just change what your little mark is. So that's okay. Okay. <coughs> Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the equation that best fits this line. So this, this, um, this data is collected on like how long a femur is compared to how tall somebody is. So if you were in, uh, what's the person that digs in the ground the most? Is that the human scientist or is that a, yeah, or Is it our scientist? Anyway. If you go into that job where you're digging the ground for bones and you find a femur and it's 47 meters long, how are you 
was going to know how tall that female or male was. Like that's part of your job is you find one bone and you can figure out all this information about how the person lived and what they ate before they died. How are you going to figure that out? We find all of this data and we find the line that best fits. And then we can make predictions. From that. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's going to be close. Is this close? Close to a line. So I'm going to show you how to find the line of best fit on the calculator as well. So that's our next step. This is step two. So all of that was step one. Step two is we're going to use the linear regression feature. That's called finding the line of best fit. So to do that, so to find the line of best fit, find line. To do that, we're going to go back to stat. Went back to stat. Stat. And this time, we want to find in, um, the line from our data that we've already entered. So this time, we're going to calculate. So you're going to arrow over to calculate. So I'm going to arrow over. To calculate. <coughs> and if you look here, there's all kinds of things to choose from, which we'll use some of this later in the year. What we want right now is a linear regression. We want a linear regression. So here it is, number four, lin reg AX plus B, linear regression. You can either hit four, or you can arrow, 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 and then hit enter. But we want to choose four. So I'm going to choose number four, Lynn Reg. Oops, Reg. Linear regression. Okay, and then um, depending on how old your calculator is, it either looks like this, and you just um, like if it, if it looks like mine, oh, if it looks like mine, you just have to hit enter. Oops, hold on, I just hit something wrong. Um, you just have to like. Either arrow down or hit enter until you calculate. If you have the older ones, you just hit enter and it should calculate. Tell me if you don't have that fit on your calculator. Enter. Tell me if you don't get that fit on your calculator so I can help. You got it? We got it? Got it? Everybody over here? We're good? So it says something about invalid dimensions. So I'm going to go back to your stat where it'll look at what you typed in real fast. So I'm going to go back to the edit. And stat, Can I look at this when we're done and, and you just kind of look off him and then um, and I'll just like add in the new, like usually I can find the mistake right away. We'll just hold on to that. We'll come back to it. <coughs> Take a note. Okay. All right. So what we have is some information. Um, the equation is in the line y equals ax plus b. Same thing as like mx plus b, ax plus b. Here they tell you the a value and the b value. All you have to do is write this stuff down in the equation. So, <coughs> excuse me, this is actually on the next page where we put it. Like goes over here. It says write the equation of line of best fit. So I'm going to write y equals, and it looks like my a value is about 2.60, and then I multiply that by x, and I put plus, and then my b value is 64.9968. Oh, 
I feel like I have to round that to 65. So that's coming from these numbers here, the A and the B. They're, they give you some other numbers. The R squared, we're not going to use. But the R value, we are going to use. This R value, I'm going to write it down here, and then we'll talk about it in a moment. It's called the correlation. I'll write it. Correlation. Is it two L's or one L? It's one L's. Oh, it's one L. Yeah, that's what I thought. Correlation coefficient. It's at the top of the paper. Correlation coefficient for this is 0 0.99, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But you're going to have to write that in your assignments. We'll write it down now. Okay, so right up here, understand the correlation coefficient. Um, I have different examples of scatter plots and what the correlation coefficient would be. For all of these, the R value is always, always, always between negative 1 to positive 1. It's always in between those numbers, always. If it is exactly negative 1 or positive 1, that means the data fits a line exactly. Like the slope is the same, the constant rate of change. Our data did not fit a line exactly, right? It's like kind of scattered around, but it's pretty close to a line. If it's pretty close to a line, the number is going to be really close to 1 or negative 1. Our number was what? Point nine nine. That's pretty close to a line. So I would say that this is a strong correlation. But there's something else you have to say. You have to say if it's close to positive 1 or close to negative 1. This point 0.9 is close to which one? Positive. So you're going to say this is a strong positive correlation. And what that means is the plot, the data itself is close to being a line that goes uphill. Positive going uphill. Close to 1. So here's an example of like what 0.7 might look like. 0.3. You see how 0.3 is not very close to a line. It's kind of scattered, but it still kind of looks like it's going up a line, but uphill. And here's a coefficient of nothing. Like there's no pattern here. And then here's a negative correlation of 0.7, here's a negative 0.3, and here's a 0 again. No correlation. So we're going to find this line of best fit for this data as well on our calculator. So that, um, oh, well, we just, I'm sorry, we did find a line. We're going to graph it on our calculator as well. But um, these are a lot of decimals. And I don't want to write all those down and copy them over by hand. So the calculator will actually copy stuff for you. I'm going to show you how to copy the equation. That's what I'm going to do now. Copy the equation. Copy the equation. And I'm going to copy it so we can graph it. <coughs> to do this, the very last thing you should have done would have been that linear regression. If you, if you like, did other stuff after that, you have to go back and redo that linear regression. That has to be the last thing you did. Did anybody do stuff after it? Like, the last thing you've done? Tell me now, so I'll tell you later. Everybody still has this on their calculator. Okay. To copy it, we're going to graph it, so we're going to want to copy it to the y equals. So you have to tell the calculator where to copy it first. So the first thing you're going to do is hit y equals. Well, that's the first thing we're going to do is y equals. This is telling your, your calculator where we want to copy it. So when it's sitting here, we're now going to tell it to copy it. And tell it to copy it just seems like a bunch of random things, so write them down. First thing you're going to hit is this button that says bars, V-A-R-S, bars, V-A-R-S. Then you think, oh, we are working with statistics right now. I'm going to arrow down until I choose statistics. So five, statistics. And then when you see this um, 
No, I don't even know what it, this menu. You're going to arrow over to equation. EQ, arrow over to equation. Arrow over to EQ. And then you choose number one, regular EQ. So you just hit enter. Or choose number one, hit one or hit enter. I'm writing it down. It's R-E-G E-Q. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. When you do that, it should have copied into your Y equal. If you are here, you can hit graph. If you are here, you can hit graph. If you are not here, I'm walking around to help. If you are here, you can hit graph. Yeah, it's just um, the five seven. That's just like wrapping around. Oh. Mine's there. I didn't remember. I think the older calculator does what? Once you're there, hit graph. Oh, you put it in the wrong order. You look less. You just more like sitting in there. That's our hour. I think. Is everybody there? That's everything. That's just it. I'll hit my graph. We're almost done, almost done. <coughs> Your line should go through that data unless you've done something wrong. So it looks like it goes through that data. Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? <laughs> oh, your window. You didn't switch your window a long time ago. Let me switch it. on what we did, and then I'll ask me, and I'll go back over this part with you, okay? us to do it says it right here but it also says it on this paper side where there's more space. the other thing where it's asking us to do is um, write the line of fit which we just did but it says use it to estimate the height of a person whose femur is 35 centimeters long so how can we find the height of the person if we know the femur is 35 centimeters long plug 35 in for which value x because x is the femur Y is the height. But you know what? I'm teaching you how to do this on the calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. So what we're going to do to plug in um, the 35 for X is you're going to do second trace, second, trace, and trace is at the very top. And then you're going to choose value, which is number one, value, number one. Mm -hmm. Value, second trace, which is the trace is at the top. If you need to see it, I will point to it. See trace? And then you just choose the first one, which is value. I did not hear what you said. No, you said second trace. Is it not working? I can come help. Um, once you hit second trace, you see what pops up at the bottom? It says X equals. What do we want X to equal? So type in 35, hit enter, and then it tells you the Y value right there. Second trace. Second trace. Oh, you don't have to hold the trace. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not like a computer where it's like a ship. You can move one or the other. There you go. Anybody? Did you get Did you get the answer? So what's the what's the centimeters for um, a person with 35 uh, femurs at 35 centimeters long? What's the what's the height? 
approximately 156.12 centimeters. So that was a lot. It actually doesn't take that long. It's just like a lot to go through. So there's one more example on the back. You know, it's like a it's like a different example, but it's the same kind of thing. This time it's talking about the humorous, which is a different bone. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the whole thing. If you uh, feel like you got it. You can, you know, work ahead of me, but it's not a problem. I'm going to go through the whole thing so it's recorded. And if you try to do it as well, I'm going to start over. Okay? A little bit faster because we've done it once. I don't know where the buttons are. So the very first thing that I want to do is just go to Y equal and clear anything that's in there because we're starting over. Clear that. <coughs> and then we have new data. Data goes under stat. So we go to the stat button, and when you look at the choices under stat button, we want to enter data. Well, that's editing. That's edit data. Edit number one. Oh, no, there's data from before. I'm going to clear it. So I'm going to go up, hit clear, enter. I'm going to go up, hit clear, enter. Up, clear, enter, and it's gone. Now I'm going to type in my X values, which are across the top, and my Y values are across the bottom. I just type them in the same order that they give them to me. Oh my gosh, I didn't do it. I hit plus every time. <laughs> do that again. I'm just going to make sure when I type it in that my data is like the same length. I don't have one column that's longer than the other. If so, I probably did something wrong. You know what you should try to do this one, the second one, and I don't know what happened with the first one. If it works the second time, it must have been some crazy fluke. But if it doesn't work the second time, I'll come work again. Okay, um, so once we have our data put in, then we, we want to go see it. So what do we have to think about to be able to see this data? Does our calculator know what we want? Does it know what we want to see? Just notice numbers I put in. It does not read our mind. So we need to window. We need to go to window and tell the calculator what X's and Y's we want to see. So we look at my maximum and minimum X's and Y's. And I look here and it looks like my X's are all in the 20s and 30s. So maybe my X minimum is going to be 20 and my X maximum is going to be 40. And maybe I'll just count by twos. I don't know. I'm just making things up. You can do whatever you want as long as you can see it. And I look at my Y's, and it looks like my lowest Y is 130, my highest Y is 166, so my Y values, I'm going to make those go from 125 to 170. And I'll count that by fives. Are we supposed to have a two on the third? In the scale? Yeah. You can have a one there, you can have a two, you can have a five if you want. I just, you can make up whatever you want. It's just those little marks at the bottom, what are you counting by? I made one count by two. But this does not have to be the same for every person. It's just if you don't make a window where you can see everything, it's not going to help. And once you hit graph, you should be able to see it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go get the equation. And the equation comes from going back to stat. This time we're going to calculate. So you go over, and we do linear regression, number four. So 
So I have an approximate equation for my, for my answer, which is from the A and the B. And then the R value is the correlation coefficient. And if it's close to 1, then it's strong. Because it's a positive number, we write positive. Because it looks like it would be close to a line. And then I'm going to have to um, estimate. But to estimate, I want to graph my equation. So I'm going to copy it. So this is everything I've already told you to do. You might have to go watch this video again. Sorry. Uh, but I'm going to copy it. We're going to go back to y equals, make sure I'm sitting in there, and then I start the copy process, which goes to bars, statistics, which is 5, over to EQ, and then regular EQ, and it copies it for me. So again, that was bars, statistics, over, over to EQ, regular EQ. It copies it for you, you graph. It copies it. Did you do this task? Calculate it? Because if you don't do that first, it won't. It doesn't have anything to copy. Okay, once you have that, then we can estimate. So to estimate, you use your trace or your calculate key, which is right here, and it says um, we want to estimate 40 centimeters. So I do second trace. My value is going to be 40. And so for 40 inches, it is a height of approximately 185.64 centimeters. So that was very fast. I know. That's why we recorded a video. And this is not due till Friday. All you will be doing in your homework is typing stuff in and graphing it and typing it in and graphing it. You will just do the same stuff over and over again so you can learn it. But this is not due till Friday. What is due tomorrow? You have a quiz, so you have both of your quiz reviews to turn in tomorrow. So two quiz reviews. Where are the answers to the quiz reviews? On Canvas. So you walk in with your answers checked. This is not yours. You walk in with your answers checked. So you're ready for your quiz. The quiz will be just like both of you. No secrets here. Okay? And then um, if you have calculator troubles, I can also help you after the quiz because um, you won't need this stuff for the quiz.